Hello there. Welcome back to Jedi Knights. I'm your moderator, Christian Buckley. Joining us today, as always, is Mike Connors. Thanks for having me. Of course. It's a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> having you here is the best pleasure of the day. Yeah, we, uh, we, we made it all the way to the end. We did. And sitting between us, making it a Pat Witch, I guess, Pat Maroney. You're welcome for having me. Thanks. I'll change it up. Thank you. How are you doing? <laughs> Good. Uh, this is your last shoot in here. Yeah. Bit of a trip. Yeah, for sure, but it's gonna be a wild Excelsior. one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's, been, there's been a lot of uh, men's. In there this has place. been. This is the second podcast we worked on in here. Yeah, second movie series franchise yeah. that we've worked on, and now it's over. It's over. I feel like it's the you know, well Harry Potter. But True. That's I'll, that's I still an opening. That, yeah. But uh, Star Wars is what the show is about, and we saw the finale. Last night, we are going to give uh, like spoiler-free impressions at first, and then dive into what we thought about the movie um, quickly. Be- but before we get into that, yeah. once again, thank you for helping, Pat. You're welcome, and thank you for joining, Mike. <laughs> no, thank you. All right, so all right, <laughs> <laughs> I already said thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got four hours of sleep last night, so this is going to be an interesting show. Oh yeah, you had a paper to write. Yeah, and I was just thinking about this damn movie all the time. <laughs> I honestly haven't thought about it much, so this, this is, is okay. It's going to be yeah. me just raw impressions. Raw impressions. I went right into the Mandalorian afterwards. So like, <laughs> you didn't even wait yourself up. I didn't even. Yeah, so. no. Um, so prefacing all of the discussion, even before we get to like, a, should you see it? General, yeah. like, what do we think of it? Um. <clears throat> I think it goes without saying for all of us, but we will say it. Our opinions and final ranking by the end of this episode is, is probably going to be drastically different than it would be after a second viewing yeah, or a third or fourth. Whatever opinions I have about this movie today, it's less. it's been less than 24 hours yeah. since we saw yeah. it. Like, yeah. I guarantee you that most every single one of them will change yeah, in some w- way. We left the theater about 12 hours ago. Yeah, so... Um, been, that's true. That's hasn't true. been as, that much time. No. And for me, at least, leaving The Last Jedi, I was, like, shocked. But I felt positive about it. Leaving Rise of Skywalker, I was shocked. <laughs> and uh, the second viewing I for Last Jedi, like, affirmed my love for that movie. So I'm interested to see what the second viewing for this will do. Are you going to wait as long to see it? <laughs> A second time? I So I saw Last Jedi the day after. Oh, okay. Like, within 24 hours. All right, all right. This I'm in no rush to see again. <laughs> yeah, okay. I, I thought that you took a lot a while to see The Last Jedi. But oh, no, no, no. Okay. Th- my f- first two viewings were within a day. All right, all right. Did we see the first, like, time slot for, for public viewing? Or did it uh, in our theater, yes. Okay. Yeah. How, was th- how do you guys rate the theater experience? It was fine. It was low energy. <laughs> Really low energy. Yeah, and a lot of people were psyched to be there, which I was kind of with because I don't like movie clappers in general. No, yeah. And game kind of changed your mind on that a little bit, though, right? A little bit, but that was just because it was like such a such a moment. Yeah, you know and what you I mean? would, but you would think the last Star Wars movie should also be a moment but it's, like it's that. It's like not because there's three more. Yeah, you're right. And it's not like as beloved. Yeah, as the original franchises. And we're gonna get into that for sure. Yeah, but uh. uh I got a question for you. Who's a better smuggler now, me and you or Han Solo? Because we somehow managed to bring two large Baja Blasts (laughs) into the theater and like a full set like Taco Bell dinner. I'm amazed that worked. It was literally like us walking in and just (laughs) because the drinks were moving around. Um, Yeah, we were walking down the hallway and you were like, do you hear that? (laughs) And everything went quiet and all I hear, heard was like the wrinkling of like ice cubes in the yeah. Place. See, I wouldn't have to do that if other places just stocked Baja Blast. True. I wouldn't pay for it. It would be like a nine dollar <laughs> Baja Blast. I would have paid for it because they had that R two D two cup. That's true. That thing was kind of cool. It was very cool. But before we tip into spoilers, final word: Should people see the movie if they're fans of Star Wars? Like, what's the opinion there? Like. Because personally, I think it was a fun ride. If you didn't like Last Jedi, you might love this movie. Um, I thought they played it very safe to a detriment for me. And I think I can see how the general public would probably enjoy the movie. Yeah, I can see that too. And I mean, I don't think I have to say it. Like, if you like Star Wars, you're probably just going to see this movie anyways. Mm -hmm. Um, But 
It's a Star Wars movie for sure. Yeah. Um, it's a fun time. Mm-hmm. As as I think, like there are some pretty glaring po- like plot holes in it. Um, that's just me. Yeah. But yeah, go see it. Yeah. I thought it definitely closed the door on the trilogy well. Yeah. But um, it was a little cheesy. The movie was a little cheesy for me. Yeah. Some some things in it were just a little too convenient for me. Yeah. But your reaction right now is pretty similar to like when, when we were getting up in the theater. I looked over at you guys right away and I was like, what do you think? And Mike was like, it's a movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely a movie. Like, yeah. Uh, my initial reaction <laughs> was, guess I'm not crazy now, huh? Because I really think, and I was texting Jack about this last night too, I think people are going to start coming around in The Last Jedi now because I think that movie at least and we're gonna like dip into spoilers now so if you haven't seen the movie yet you can leave uh, yeah, definitely, and come back later. definitely yeah. just leave now it says it Do right it. here don't watch any further sorry to give yeah. you editing work but <laughs> i'm not doing that yeah. <laughs> um Erased. but yeah once you see the movie obviously come back and we can see our rankings and then how it all shakes out but i i think like we're talking about our thoughts today being reactionary yeah. This movie's reactionary, and I was praying it wouldn't have been. Like reactionary to The Last Jedi? Yes. There are moments in here that crap all over The Last Jedi in ways that I felt were unwarranted. Yeah. Are you talking mostly just about, like, the, the snubs in, in terms of, like, Luke and yeah. his ghost? Yeah, and, dude. Yeah. That felt so out of character for me. It was a little disrespectful, actually. It was super Because dis- the thing is, like... I think all of us are kind of on the same page where we thought Luke as a character eight made him like super interesting for this stage in his life Mm -hmm. and nine basically ignored all of that. Well, I don't think it invalidated that. I don't know. I don't think it did either, but like the line of like, Oh, treat a Jedi's weapon with more respect. I was like, okay, sure. Because at the beginning of eight, he was in a different place that works now. Like he can say that. Yeah. But like just his overall attitude and like, his guidance, like, it was very out of character for where Luke stood as a person in 8, I thought. Well, I mean, by the end of 8, he kind of, like... He shifted, yeah. Yeah, he shifted massively. He's like, I won't be the last Jedi. Yeah, and, like, that Luke, that was, like, there's still hope, there's still a chance, there's a fighting chance. He just kind of felt like paint-by-numbers Jedi Master in this. Not like the guy that was, like, the Jedi... They're going to live on, but there's issues that should be addressed. Yeah, he kind of, like, lost all of his nuance. Yeah. His yeah. Jedi critique. Yeah. He, he just, like, it, it wasn't, it didn't feel like the same character. It, feel like there, it felt like they were trying to, like, undo everything Mark Hamill, like, had beef with. Yeah. And he was very open about having beef with yeah. in the interview process for the movie. Uh, it, it, it felt very much like they were like, all right, let's... Let's bring, like, him to this level of, like, an Obi-Wan or a Yoda. And the last movie definitely strayed him from there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I see what you're... I kind of think it's, like, there could have been a happy balance. Yeah, there you know definitely I mean? could have been. Where, like, you, you got a little bit of Cynic Luke from the last movie, and you got a little bit of, like, he, like Force Ghost all-knowing. But at the same time, he could have been, like, yeah, like... Definitely some stuff needs to be talked about. Yeah. He wasn't he was also really not in this movie. Yeah, he really wasn't. He was it was like four minutes tops. Yeah, he had one scene even. and then a cameo basically at the end. With his voice, that's it. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Her, actually his physical presence. Yeah. Too. And then he like yeah, he stood next to his sister. Yeah, I forgot about that. Um so yeah, this is less of a structured discussion, I guess, and more of just like a natural flow of consciousness. Cause like, we're still digesting this movie. I don't want to go like beat for beat through the story of this thing. Cause yeah. there's a lot to cover because this, the beginning of this movie, I could not breathe until they met Lando. Even if we try to do that, I feel like we would still miss stuff. Yeah. So whatever's I, important to us right now. I like, talking. don't remember the first act because <laughs> it was so fast. There's so much Flew going by. on. So yeah. Like when I, we rewatched <coughs> seven, I was like, oh, Seven is moving at a good pace. It does not feel like a two-hour movie. This, I don't know what happened, but, like, the editing, the pacing is ridiculous. It almost felt like they crammed two movies into one movie. Yeah. Yeah, and they really didn't need to do that. I thought they could have, like, what did the crawl do? Also, the crawl. Yeah. Jesus. The it dead was, speak. Yeah. The crawl the, felt like a spark notes like <laughs> thing. Like, yeah. it was really short and very to the point. Yeah, and, like, I get having a basic crawl. I think that's important. 
But I think everything that they breeze through at the beginning of this movie could have been a crawl, and then we pick up when they're looking for the thing, and they meet Lando. That could have been a cool, like, cold open, I guess, even though it's after yeah. the titles for Star Wars. But Oh, you're saying, like... Oh, like the resistance is already looking for yeah, yeah. 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 Like right. the crawl is like Kylo Ren and the resistance are in a race to find the la- the map to Palpatine because he's w- returned. That would have been so much better, right? Yeah. Yeah, and it would have so been it, the, the like the the funny thing about that is it only would have been like two more paragraphs, like tops. Or they could have just taken... rewritten it. <laughs> yeah, no, they could have just kept the first thing with like Emperor Palpatine as put out this radio message yeah. essentially and then yeah. just change the next two paragraphs yeah. to just be like they're already looking for it also i would have liked to get some explanation on palpatine's survival yeah we can you get know to that I, like that would have been a good opening <laughs> the, there are a lot of things that just like are not explained yeah in this yeah. movie it's like that is a good example i feel like that has to do with like maybe like do you think this movie could have been better had abrams had the second movie yeah, yeah, definitely. Because I feel like elements of like the first like act this c- of this movie would probably just be episode eight. Yeah, yeah. like his episode eight for sure. Mm. And I like that's the thing that really bothers me about it because I thought, like, regardless of what people think of eight as a movie, I think where it leaves off for Star Wars, it's a blank slate, and we could have had like another four movies, another trilogy. We could have had so much potential to go do new things, new things with these characters. But instead, we're like, oh, no, 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 no. We're going to do an ending now. It's going to be over and uh, 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 fixed it. <laughs> well, yeah. I, yeah, I feel like, I don't know, from, from my perspective, I didn't really like The Last Jedi. I don't yeah. really think it pr- like progressed the story that much. Mm-hmm. So I f- think maybe J.J. Abrams had to, felt like he had to like basically write two movies and put it into one. And like, I don't know if he did, though. Like actually like, do something with that. Would you say that like the two movie thing is split between hunting for the the map and then everything else. Yeah, it's like it's like Deathly Hallows part one, part two. Right, but like <laughs> I don't know if he would have had to do a second movie if they just used what the crawl is for to establish that entire first act. And then they could have given everything else time to breathe. Yeah, they, that could have been done. Yeah, because like, think about the other Star Wars movies <coughs> we watched in this entire show. The significant time jumps, and they explain a lot of the exposition in the crawl. Yeah. That's a star, like, as far as movies go, lazy, but like, it's a Star Wars thing that they do <laughs> to set up these movies. Yeah. They get a pass. Yeah. And it's such a Just big, like the Force. It's yeah, a, such right. like a big universe that it's like, it's one of those things where it's just fair to say, like, to assume you don't know what happened. Or not to assume you don't know what happened, but to not see what happened. Just be told what happened. Yeah. As opposed to, like, such in depth, like, 15 second details yeah that just don't need to be there yeah i i really so the opening opening of the movie like with kylo ren i thought that was cool i think that was a really cool way to open up the movie if star wars had cold opens before the titles that would have been great the first the first voice that we hear in this entire movie is palpatine's yeah it's no dialogue until he talks to kylo at that's what he said right oh was it i don't even remember well that was the one of the headlines a couple weeks ago yeah yeah but yeah, like him, I was really into it. I was, I loved him on his journey, like looking for these artifacts, finally fleshing that out of nice. his character. That was cool. Showing up to Palpatine, I was like, okay, I can get behind this. Yeah, the like the way they introduce him, the way he's like, oh, I was doing everything. I was like, okay, I'll give you that because it's Palpatine. Yeah, it, it like makes sense. I guess. Yeah, like the whole Snoke thing. I thought it was cool that they had like. Snoke's in a two. Yeah, I was like, that? so did, yeah. did those just not work? Are those like backups? What <laughs> backup Snoke's? <laughs> what are those for? I don't know. Uh, I, but I like that Palpatine was like, he he was basically saying like, I did everything. I've been in your head the whole time. I was everything. I was creating the conflict in you, so this could work. So you could bring my granddaughter back. So like that whole thing, I was solid. I was like, okay, that's what this movie's gonna be. It's gonna be fun. Yeah, but. It's just a messy movie. I don't know, man. Like, uh, the whole Palpatine thing kind of doesn't make sense to me. I doesn't, feel like they needed doesn't. to explain that because, ev- like, forever, like, when I was a kid, mm-hmm. you watch Return of the Jedi and Death's, the Death Star blows up and you're like, oh, like, the, the Emperor is, like, mega dead at that point. Like, <laughs> yeah, he's, he's totally dead. He falls down a hundred foot smoked, pit. Yeah. yeah. Smoke comes out of it. Then the Death Star blows Literally up. Literally blows up. He dies three times. Yeah, like, he's super dead. 
yeah. and then just he's just alive, like in the flesh too. Yeah, like completely. Yeah, and I really it's like just his eyes are different. Yeah, his eyes are different. Yeah, he's like, like he's zombie. missing his fingertips. Yeah. yeah, like that's the only thing. Yeah, I like. I would have given them Palpatine if they did something with him, you know, and not just had him there to have him there. Because I really feel like they didn't do anything with him. He was there as just like, and that like bums me out too about where we left off with Kylo Ren as a character in eight, because I thought he could have been positioned to be as a great villain, had a really great final word on everything. Yeah. But instead they're just like, oh, uh, Palpatine's back, guys. (laughs) You happy now? (laughs) Like it seriously, it felt out of nowhere. And I, I would have liked some explanation for that, at least. Yeah. It literally made zero sense. It was just like yeah. he's on It's a like, okay, so this is now. a thing. I guess we have to go with it. <laughs> yeah, but, like, the thing that doesn't make any sense is his body's, like, completely intact. Is it, though? Because, like, he was on that, like, crane thing. Did I he have know, legs? It looked like it, though. He it was definitely like he was standing in pain or, or something, but, like, it didn't... Mecha Palpatine? <laughs> kind of? Like, yeah, kind of Mecha Palpatine. Sorry, go ahead, Yeah, I, it just... It, it, it seemed, like... I would have liked that sort of, like, idea that everyone was rolling with in predictions before the movie. Like, he's a force entity. Yeah. Maybe he's, like, embodied in the throne or something. Yeah, it could have been a holocron, too. Just They've ha- seen that before. Yeah, just having the physical Palpatine, though, was, it, it again, like you said, it made no sense. Yeah. Yeah, it would have been, it would have made more sense, Pat, you're right, if it was, like, the force, like, yeah. like, a manifestation of the force in some way. Mm-hmm. And we've talked about this in the past, at least how I look at movies when I'm watching them in theaters. I don't try, like, I never really pick them apart, and I never didn't really pick apart this movie. I was just, like, taking everything they were throwing at me. I'm like, okay, this is what it is. This is how the logic's working. I can make things connect. But, yeah, I just, like, at the end of it all, it just felt unambitious Mm -hmm. and incredibly safe and disappointing. And the moments that did hit, some of them worked, I thought, but, like, some of them felt unearned. Uh, the, we talked about we were probably going to be crying at least twice. Did yeah. you cry? No, I didn't cry once. The closest I got was when Chewbacca got the medal from Maz, and it was like, oh, you know yeah. what? You lost all your friends. This has been a meme forever, and you're getting what you deserve. You've been through some stuff. Good job, Chewie. When I thought Chewie died... That too. I was like, Daisy no. really's acting there too. Like her scream out. I was like, I felt that. I was like, yeah. oh my God. Well, yeah, she really sold it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was really good. Um, but what about like, before we get to <coughs> our favorite parts, because there were things all of us enjoyed about the movie. Yeah, for sure. Why don't we talk about like, <clears throat> do we want to say anything more about Palpatine right now before we get to the Ray aspect of it? No. no. Okay. So let's talk about Ray. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. Can I ask you a question before you talk about Ray? Sure. Is that, do you think that's really like a bad sign in itself that like Emperor Palpatine has returned in the Star Wars world and we can, in, in five minutes, we're like, I don't want to talk about it anymore? Do you think it's disappointing? I think it's disappointing because it felt unearned and the movie relied on nostalgia, I think more than Force Awakens, personally. Yeah, I mean, it was pretty fan service actually. It was, yeah. Like, I hate saying that. Yeah. Because, like, at some level, like, all Star Wars movies are going to be. But yeah. But this is, like, really <laughs> fan service Yeah. Yeah. So, man, there were moments in this movie where, like, I thought Solo handled the nostalgia stuff better. And Solo, I think, is, like, probably the worst defender as far as being like, hey, you know this thing. Mm-hmm. But, like, this had so much of just, like, pandering to the audience that I thought, like, personally. And, like, it's fun, and I enjoyed myself, but, like, it's just no, there's no substance. And there there was so much potential for it. Yeah. Especially as the ending, because this didn't need to be the ending. We talked about that a lot in our predictions and for 8. I mean, I th- I've kind of changed my view on that. I think that it should be the ending. Like, well, now it should, yeah. This yeah, should be the should. final thing for now it. Now it should. I think it will be. Yeah. Just because... Why would they? I mean, we'll get more books and stuff, but we'll yeah, we'll get books and stuff. Yeah. Movie wise, we're not touching this era again for a long time, I think. Yeah, let's just wait another 30 years yeah. and then do <laughs> then do another trilogy. Yeah, I think Ray's hair gray or something. And yeah, so Ray, okay, pa- Mike, I want to ask you this first. Sure, 
what was your stance on because your main thing in the predictions was you want to see Ray struggle with the dark side and you want to see her like I guess train a little bit more. They do both those things in this movie, I thought. Yeah. But they were they do. satisfying for you? Uh well, no, because I would have liked to see her actually go turn. to the dark dark side and I think she really almost did it. Mm-hmm. And that was at the point where Ben Solo had already turned. Yeah. So I was like, wow, my predictions are about to come true. Yeah. Like, I was, like, hyped. Yeah. And then it didn't happen. Yeah. But I, that's fine. I mean, I, I wasn't really expecting them to do that. It's mm-hmm. kind of, like, a little I, much. But. I think they did it more than I was expecting to. Yeah. Yeah, they did. And I liked how they handled it. Because, like, yeah, it's kind of, like, blunt to just have someone fight a dark version of themselves in a vision. But I thought that was a cool way to embody, like, her entire entire character struggle throughout this trilogy. Well, she was about to, like, follow Palpatine. Yeah, she because she realized, she's yeah. like, oh, this is my destiny. Yeah. <laughs> what do I do? And then she, she like, saw, she forced time with Kylo Ren yeah, one, one time. last time. Yeah. Um. So the fact that she's Palpatine's granddaughter, what's the, the vibe there? Because you want her to be a Skywalker, kind of. Kind of. Uh. I wanted her to be nobody. I know, Pat, you've been sort of floating around different theories. I thought it was definitely cool. Mm-hmm. Um, my whole thing is I wanted her to be a Kenobi. Mm-hmm. I thought that would be dope. I uh, thought it was a cool take to have her be a Palpatine. But, again, it was one of those things where, like, like I wanted more explanation on Palpatine. You know what I mean? Like, as far as like I knew, like there was no reference to Palpatine having any life other than just being this solo entity as an emperor. Yeah, I mean, it, with the prequel trilogy, they established the fact that he can manipulate the Force, and I, I guess he did that again. But he had a, a, <coughs> a, like a kid. It wasn't like a like a Palpatine Force Mama Palpatine. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, well, and. He was, like, a senator for a while, so maybe at some point he had, like, a family to try to keep up that persona. Yeah, that's completely fair. And the the family itself, like, there's no reference to Palpatine's wife, I guess, but it might, like... We'll get a book. Probably. (laughs) We'll have to get get something, something, yeah. yeah. About, well, so it's Palpatine's son that's Ray's dad. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because, like, I, when they showed Ray's parents finally, I was like, oh, they are nobody's. I like this. And then when it, it was like, oh, they're not nobodies. They're just nobody actors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't Adam. It wasn't Kylo Ren speaking. It was Adam Driver just being mean to his castmates. <laughs> and like, oh, they're nobodies. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, I was expecting JJ to do that, to be honest. What? Like, totally just like ret- like wreck on it the, yeah, the whole yeah. you're nobody thing yeah we talked about that for our predictions too like <clears throat> i i think it's making her a palpatine is fine and i think it adds an interesting layer to like the fact that she was struggling with who she was already so adding that layer of the darkness is in my family i think that works for where we are with her yeah but like again like th- slapping it on palpatine is like it just feels like Palpatine as an existence was a Hail Mary for this thing. It just feels so out of place with everything else that's going on. I mean, but, all right, in the context of all the other movies that we watched on the show, yes. do you think that that's really out of place? No, because he didn't show up until five, you know, and, like, four, he's pulling the strings, and even the things that I didn't think made sense in the prequel trilogy, we were basically like, you know what, it makes sense if Palpatine was the one that orchestrated this. Right. Yeah. It's just the fact that, like, Everything was supposed to, like, for this trilogy, where we were, it was, like, we're pushing new things now. Yeah. New things, the old guard's dead, and then, like, I feel like this trilogy's kind of cheap in Vader and Anakin as a character, too. I was going to talk about that when we yeah. talked about, like, the ending. And yeah, we, we I can say that. Then. Yeah. But, yeah, it's just, like, I get Palpatine being used in Star Wars. And I think for a finale, it makes sense. I just, like, the execution of it, it just kind of felt like he was there to be there. Mm-hmm. You know? It's like, oh, we need this in here. Yeah, I mean, I think it makes sense in, like, the overall context of the saga. Yeah, lore-wise, yeah, I can buy it. But, like, it, it does seem, like, kind of shoehorned in there for, like, no reason. Yeah, and let's not forget, Colin Trevorrow was originally going to be the guy that was doing this movie. Yeah. Uh, I think he got 
I don't know if he left or got fired, but it was in September of 2017. Yeah, I think, I don't know. They said that they had creative differences. Yes. Just what they always say. So I'm like, I'm curious to see what that would have been if Palpatine would have been involved. I'm curious to see what happened when Carrie Fisher passed away because they had to rewrite a bunch of it. Yeah, I don't see how they could have not, like... So one of the big things that I have against this trilogy is that it doesn't feel very cohesive because they had different writers for each of the movies. Mm-hmm. But I feel like was not the case with the. Uh, I mean, well, the, the original trilogy also for the original trilogy, right? Yeah, and but George was still like writing he all the co-writing yeah. in some cases. George, but. yeah, George created the story for all the three of the movies. Mm-hmm. They just had people who adapted it for the screen, mm-hmm. essentially. But like this mo- these this trilogy like had basically three different writers for each of the movies, mm-hmm. and that that to me kind of l- makes it lose its cohesiveness in terms of storytelling. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, it's just. This story particularly, like, it's it's hard for them to wrap up something that, like, he didn't start or, like, he didn't finish. I'm yeah. talking about J.J. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, like, honestly, I like most of J.J. Abrams' films, so I was super surprised watching this thing of, like, how much I wasn't vibing with it. Because, <laughs> like, there's, like, there's moments that I really enjoy. Yeah. Like, a lot of the character relationships between each other, as far as the main cast go, I really liked. And I liked seeing Poe in this role. I liked seeing Finn, full, like, in his rightful yeah. place as a resistance diehard. Um, like, 3PO in this movie was fun. Like, all the, like the characters that I wanted to enjoy in this movie, I did enjoy. Ben Solo. Yeah. But, like, everything that tied it all together is where it's bogging it down for me. Yeah. I just think it had a really a really hard task to tie it all together. Yeah. And I, the I, thing is, I think that's self-imposed because I really don't think going into nine, I know we kind of disagree here. I really don't think this needed to be the end because <coughs> I've said this before. When the marketing for nine kicked up, I was shocked. I was like, oh, it's ending? <laughs> okay. Yeah. It doesn't really feel like an ending. It doesn't. Maybe but they're it, just is. Gonna it is. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. If so, maybe yeah. it should be. I, I do think, I do think it, it would have felt more like an ending if they had the, the I don't know they had like an overall vision for this trilogy. I feel like they didn't. Mm-hmm. I feel like they just made the first one. They were just like, oh, we'll just figure it out as we go along. Yeah, and that works if they're not going to close it off at two movies later. You know. Well, I think that they always had that 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 thought. I mean, like of ending on nine. Yeah, Star Wars has always been like trilogies, right? So like, I don't know. Yeah, but like. Like I a trilogy know. of trilogies. Yeah, that's like on the on that level I see it and but the fact that it's Disney and what they've done with Marvel, it's like Star Wars is obviously gonna go on for a very long time, so why set yourself up to be restricted like this? You know? Yeah. It also like in terms of does it feel like an ending, like the very last scene. Yes. Seems like a cliffhanger for another trilogy in a way. With like Ray having her new lightsaber and the Skywalker stuff's buried and then Ray's last name is Skywalker. Like doesn't seem like she's just gonna go off into the galaxy and like start a new Jedi order. Yeah, like is she though? Like she might. She's she the last Jedi. She probably kind of feels like an obligation to. Yeah. Well yeah. I, I feel like that's what we're gonna cut to, but it just doesn't se- like I feel like we could definitely still explore Rey. Like yeah. I feel like that's just the start of the character of Rey. Yeah. And that's what I thought this entire trilogy was going to end up being. Not to, like, hammer in on that too hard, but, like, I really did think we were going to get a follow-up with these characters in the roles of what Han, Luke, and Leia would have been in a 7, 8, 9 made after, like, in the 90s. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So... Ben, like, where do you want to go next? Do we want to keep talking about Ray's character in this? Uh, well, yeah, I have more things to say about Ray's character once we talk about, like, the ending. Okay. Um, I thought the Resistance stuff was fine. Like, I thought it was yeah. inoffensive. It was fun. It was whatever. Yeah. Like, I, I just find it, like, convenient that they, like, di- that they put out a call for help, like, at the Battle of Crate, and nobody answered. Mm-hmm. And then, like, Lando and Chewie fly around, like, the, <laughs> like... <laughs> they literally drive down, like, the highway and somehow pull up an army. Yeah, like, yeah. like they, they just, like, fly past Coruscant and, like, pro- and just get, like, the entire galaxy to, yeah. like, show up in the outer, the outer region. Yeah, and... The unknown regions. Like... And the, also, like, you knew that entire time that was going to happen. Oh, yeah. 
Like, yeah. It wasn't, like, much of a suspense. It was just like, oh. I got, like, Endgame vibes from it, though. Yeah, I guess so. I guess that's I fair. did not. <laughs> I don't know. I just, like, just this big army of, yeah. like, whatever. It was cool to see. Shows up at the end. Yeah. And, like, I think that's really applicable for a lot of this movie. It was cool to see happen. It was fun moments, and it was a fun ride the whole time, but, like, underwhelming for a finale for me. Yeah, totally. So more details. Um, Ben Solo. You want to do that next? His character? Yeah. Sure. Um, Kylo Ren's one of my favorite characters. Definitely. Yeah. I think he's one of the best in this, if not the best in this trilogy. Yeah, he's up there. Definitely. Yeah. He's one of my favorites in the entire nine, personally. Does anyone else think he was kind of lamer once he turned to the light? No, I just think he didn't have much to do because he, I, I think he had two lines after he turned, I think. Mm -hmm. Or, like, not after he turned, but, like, showed up with the blue. Yeah. Uh, he said, ouch, and he said, Ray. <laughs> I think that was it. I, I just think Helmet Kylo is so much cooler than Ben Solo. You know what I mean? Like, Anakin Skywalker and Darth Vader, mm -hmm. like, especially Anakin Skywalker in Revenge of the Sith, I thought was still cool. Because he had, like, the all black going on, and he was, like, sick. He was just nice with the lightsaber. And then you sort of get to Kylo Ren, and he's just, like, wearing, like, a t-shirt and jeans. <laughs> <laughs> I like liked his outfit. I <laughs> yeah. thought it was cool. His outfit was cool. I thought it was kind of lame, but... Yeah, I Can't mean, wait like, to get that action figure. Yeah, <laughs> casual Kylo with the Skywalker saber. Yeah, this casual Kylo. Yeah, yeah, because I feel like Star Wars costumes, for, especially for Jedi, can be super extra sometimes. So I like when they keep it simple. Um, I'd like to see him with like at least a cloak. Throw a cloak on him. Have yeah. him have a hood up. It was like a baggy sweater though. <laughs> yeah, um, it was like Yeezy season three <laughs> that he was wearing. Yeah, yeah that's exactly <laughs> what it was. But uh, can we talk about how he got to his redemption? So the fight first? Yeah. Okay. I think that that's... Why did they not play Duel of the Fates there? If they were going to use it in this movie, they should have used it there, right? Uh, Yeah, probably. I mean, I, I didn't think that they had to. I know, but they, they were marketing the movie with it. I was waiting for it the whole time. Yeah. That was a cool fight scene, though. It was. It was yeah. really cool. Yeah. I think this movie might have some of my favorite, like, saber-on-saber -saber fights in it. The there are a lot of lightsabers in this movie. Yeah. Felt Which good. is cool. Yeah. I'm down with it. I really liked, even though it was like kind of fake, I liked Ray fighting herself. And it was yeah. short, but like I really liked that a lot. I liked Ray's lightsaber when she fought herself too. I think it was tight. Mm -hmm. Um wish we saw more of that. Yeah. But uh I really also thought the the force time fight, I liked that a lot too. I thought that was really cool. Oh, while well, she was in his like his bedroom. Yeah, basically. they were like teleporting back and forth. Yeah. 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 I, yeah, I thought that was cool and creative and it was a nice, like, unique thing for this movie. I love all the force timing stuff. Yeah. It's one it, of the coolest things. I think Star it's Wars. really cool, but, like, I thought there was, like, a charm that was kind of missing to it in this one for me. Really? Yeah. I think it kind of fleshed it out a little bit more and, like, showed you, like, yeah, like, what it showed the extent of it. Like, what they're seeing. Yeah. Like, in the, in the Last Jedi, it's like, you don't know, like, oh, it can is does Wraith see Kylo where she is? Mm -hmm. Where you're like, what what's going on? Yeah, I think I just liked yeah. how those were. I always better. assumed it was just like like blackness around them both. Yeah, yeah. except for each other. But mm -hmm. like they see each other in, in their respective settings, which is cool. Yeah, and I liked. Yeah, I just think that like the back and forth between the two of them in eight with those scenes, I thought it was more charming, and in this one, it was just kind of like to progress the plot. Um, you know, <laughs> it's not such a bad way to do yeah. it, though. Yeah, it's not. There's worse ways, mm -hmm. and it saved time. You know, <laughs> did because it was like instead of him traveling back and realizing something was up, he was like, "Oh, yeah. Yeah. okay, <laughs> I'm away." Um, and then I know we didn't want to see it really, but like I think there needed to be a final lightsaber fight in this movie. Yeah, I I feel like through, like in the franchise as a whole, with the exception of episode three, like, Palpatine with a lightsaber is so underused. Like, uh, yeah, I feel and like the one time they did it was super cheesy. Yeah, I, I really would have liked to see that there. Yeah, I disagree. I'm happy that I didn't see that. I think it's kind of cheesy. Well, what it's if cheesy. it was just like... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> what if, though, yeah. 
because it's him and he's like always orchestrating stuff. Yeah. What if he had like a reserve person with a, a lightsaber to fight the two of them? Oh, that would have been fun. Yeah, because I I just think that the movie needed something like that because like his death had no weight for me at all. Yeah, it was weird. It was a yeah. Voldemort death, and I hate those. It kind of just like came out of nowhere. Yeah, it did. And I know we're skipping around a lot, but we can get back to the Ben Solo thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So his that fight leading up to his turn. Yeah, on the Death Star, so cool. Yeah, very cool. When they like encounter each other in the throne room. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. Oh, so good. Yeah. yeah. I really enjoyed Ray, that. He like lashes out at him too. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. He like walks in on her when she's like super, super vulnerable, being like, Oh, I'm evil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's like, Hey <laughs> he, fuck, he like yeah. smashes the wayfinder. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. But Leading into his turn, um, it was something I was worried about going into the movie. I was worried how they handled it. But I actually really liked it, and his entire turn and everything surrounding it was one of my favorite parts of the whole movie. Yeah. I thought... I can uh, get down with that. Yeah. I thought Ray definitely marked Kylo. Yeah, I was I was like, oh, what is going to happen now? Yeah. yeah. Um, But obviously they set up the fact that she can heal people earlier, and then I was like... It's funny because when she healed the snake, I was like, this is coming back. And then I forgot about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, was that something that had been like shown that the Force can do in the past? They can heal. So this is really funny that you bring that up. Bec- and you haven't seen the next episode of The Mandalorian. I have seen it. You have? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, they in- they introduced that power. That's not really a spoiler. Yeah. Of the yeah. But they introduced that power in the that episode of The Mandalorian, which came out on Wednesday. <laughs> Which is really funny, because yeah. like, you think that they probably did that on purpose. <laughs> probably, yeah, because I was wondering if there was something that they were going to have in Mandalorian that would have made it been like necessary viewing for Nine. Turns out it, there could have been. I mean, I don't think it was necessary, no, yeah. viewing, but like, it definitely was like, oh, I've seen that before. Yeah, so like for the people that have a huge hang-up with the fact that there's a new Force power, it's like, oh, we already set it up. Yeah. Um, the Force seems so much stronger now, too, than it did in any other like trilogy of movies. Like it's I more never, present, I think. Well, I've never seen the Force stop a ship. You know what I mean? I have, because I played uh, S- the Force Unleashed. Oh, yeah. Oh. I was like, yeah. <laughs> I thought it was cool. That was pretty cool. Because the thing is, like, they build up Rey and Kylo throughout this entire trilogy <laughs> to be, like, unnaturally powerful. So the fact that they could not, like, fully ground a spaceship, but, like, at least hold it back a bit. I was like, oh, this is cool. And Because the thing is, like, it felt even. Like, she was trying to hold it. He was trying to get it back out there. And then that was the straw that broke the camel's back, or in this case, the Palpatine's lightning. Yeah. Ah. Ah. Palpatine's lightning back. Yeah. That was pretty cool. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, me too. That's cool. Um, can we talk about the uh, vision that Ben Solo had? Yeah. I With, with Han? Han? Yeah. I'm getting a sense right now that we weren't fans. I liked it, though. I oh, liked I liked it. it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I know. I really like that. That was one of my favorite moments. I'm just surprised they got Harrison Ford. I back. know. Yeah, honestly, <laughs> that's the, that's what really surprised me. Honestly, I'm I'm fascinated to like read about what happened for this movie because there's been so much stuff since Trevor got fired. But yeah. I wonder if the reason he agreed to come in was because for Ben's turn, they needed one of his parents and they couldn't have anything with Carrie Fisher. And just out of respect for, like, her role in the story, because he's been lifelong friends with her, he was like, yeah, I'll do it. Yeah. I mean, they probably paid him a lot of money, too. Oh, for yeah, sure. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Which is why he probably yeah. came back and yeah. did it. They're like, listen, you're just going to have to say the same lines you said. Like, you know this already. Yeah. Just coming come for one day of shooting, Harrison. Yeah. Please. An hour. <laughs> we'll give you $7 million. Yeah. <laughs> we'll make sure not to cancel Indy 5. <laughs> just please do this. I hope that doesn't happen. Yeah, I mean he's getting old, but he's get Lando looked very aged in this movie. Yeah, I liked Lando though. I liked yeah. him. In yeah, the movie. I liked him. Yeah, I thought he was handled better than he could have been for sure. Yeah, he had a better role to play than I was expecting. Um, back to Ben Solo though. Yes, <laughs> I I thought Adam Driver really sold that redemption. Um, Absolutely. Like, and I so. We see in episode eight that, like, he struggles to, like, kill his mom. Mm-hmm. 
but like we don't really see any like struggle like pulled to the light in nine mm -hmm. so like i can see where people are saying like it doesn't really make sense it kind of feels like it just happened out of nowhere yeah but, like also i remember though he thought his mom was dead because she got she remember well she did die no i mean in eight at the oh. end of eight he thought like up until the, she reaches out to him he thought she was dead. Yeah, but then she and he then felt he, responsible. Yeah, then he feels her die. Yeah, so like the fact that he's like, like getting that sense again, you know, like I believe that it's your mother. Yeah, you know, like you have an emotional tie there. Yeah, no, totally. I I'm not saying that I. Uh, no, I yeah, I'm responding to that criticism, not your. Yeah, I think it totally makes sense. Yeah, and Adam Driver, such a good actor. I know, and I love also. I loved seeing because Ray felt it too. Yeah, like she felt Leia pass, and yeah. then realizing what she did the second it happened, of like, oh, I <laughs> killed her son, and she died for him to come back. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> do you do you think like Kylo Ren or Ben Solo saw Leia? Because like he's like looking out like in the distance, but we don't really like Force see. time style or just yeah, like I don't know. know. Yeah, I really don't know. I think that's up for interpretation. Yeah, but interesting nonetheless. I, this ties into all of this, though. How do we feel about the Leia stuff? I liked it. I did, too. <coughs> I liked that she was Rey's master, and we got to flesh out her training as a Jedi. Yeah, it's cool to see. Like, she had a lightsaber. Yeah, it was. Re I really liked that a lot. Yeah. Um, I think in some instances, it was very clear that they were writing dialogue around what they had. Yeah. But you can't, like, that's not something. Yeah, I don't, I don't fault yeah. them for that, because I think they did a very, very, very good job for what they had to do with that character in this movie. I did feel like some of her lines, like, like were just yeah. kind of out of place. So I was like, that doesn't really make sense. Yeah. Like, it's like, it works, yeah, I, it guess, works I guess. But, like, yeah. I And, again, it's working with what they have. Yeah, so. which is not their fault. Yeah. They did. They respected her. Oh, absolutely. I think that yeah. was good. Yeah. And uh, I know, Pat, you asked yesterday if it was CGI. I looked back. There were several instances of... <clears throat> Bob Iger, J.J. Abrams, Carrie Fisher's family, her daughter <laughs> saying that they weren't using CGI because they felt it was disrespectful. So everything with Carrie Fisher outside of the flashback and maybe the ghost at the end was uh, actual footage. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's cool. Yeah. The flashback was definitely CGI. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. She looked weird in that flashback. Did didn't she look she? worse than she did in Rogue One? Totally. But but Luke looked good. Luke looked real good. Yeah. 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 Well, it was like actually mark hamill though wasn't it probably yeah. yeah i wonder if they just put like a cgi mask on sebastian stan because he's got the same bone structure and yeah. that was always the fan cast of like oh if we get another luke young luke thing make it him i mean they can age people up i'm sure they just got like a skin of mark hamill's face and yeah then just aged him down yeah so yeah. that i liked seeing that scene what you guys think about the cg during the leia luke like training scene i thought that looked pretty pretty bad yeah that that's what i was talking about yeah yeah, yeah i thought that was a bit ugly yeah Sorry. I, I don't think it was like long enough to take me out of it yeah. but like after it cut away from it i was like was that good <laughs> i wanted to see leia have a different um lightsaber color yeah what's the deal with blue yeah it's so boring so, I, I know so that's safe I, that's not like a legit criticism because I, I liked a lot of the movie. Yeah. I know it sounds legit. negative. It's just, I was disappointed, but like, I would have liked to see a green or yellow. And we did get a yellow, but like too late. All right. Yeah. That really upset me. Like we, we didn't even get a full shot of it either. It was no. It's like the, like coming off the hilt a little. We like, get like a little bit of off the hilt and it's like, I think you said it yesterday. It was like a Zippo lighter. Yeah. And it just, yeah. you just rotate it. Yeah. Yeah. That was so funny. But yeah, I wanted to see her like fight with it. Yeah. But we didn't even get, yeah, we didn't get a full shot. Yeah, that was disappointing. That was the ugliest. That was that was the ugliest looking lightsaber too, because it had like. Oh, I liked it. I liked the design of it. It was like duct tape in the middle. I mean, so did the like Anakin saber had that on too. Yeah, but was that was leather tape. Uh, but like after it got broken in half. Yeah, I just like having the like, the non perfect lightsaber. That's fair. I like it having some battle damage. Yeah. Or just like. Being I mean, it was her up. staff, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's what it was? I'm pretty sure there was... It was, was, it was at least designed after it. Like it looked the like head it. of it was. It kind of looked like your stuff. Mm -hmm. Did you think it was going to be double-sided? It would make sense <laughs> if it was. Yeah. It looked like it was. It looked like a longer lightsaber. Yeah. I don't know. And it could be, and we just didn't see it. <laughs> yeah, that's really disappointing. Um, so we felt good about the Ben Soltering, though? Yeah. Okay. We jumped around that one a lot. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't stay on topic at all. 
so I guess the last pillar of like a thing to talk about is the ending. Mm-hmm. Um, hmm. The ending, because there was a point in the middle of the movie, I think, and the turn, probably up until Ray started talking to Palpatine, I was like, this is a surefire number four on my ranking list. Because, I, yeah, I had issues at the beginning of it, but I thought it, like, settled. And then we were having a real good time. Yeah. And then as the third act began, I was like, okay, we're still still fun. I had fun with it, but, like, a lot of the moments that should have felt like end of the saga, sweeping emotions, like, incredible resolution. I was like, oh, okay, so now this. And then yeah. This. I had a big problem with the ending Mm -hmm. it kind of like almost feels like it invalidates part of like what came before it like the whole anakin storyline please go into this like anakin skywalker uh was the chosen one he kind of like took a long time for him to get there (laughs) but he eventually did bring balance to the force by destroying the sith right Mm -hmm. but in this one it's like oh that's just that never happened. Like <laughs> never now, mind. <laughs> yeah, the, Sith, the Sith never were destroyed to begin with, and now Ray has to do it. So, what is Ray the chosen one now? Like, does yeah. that even matter? Like, is that yeah. the point? Like, I don't even really know. But it was. I, I hate to cut you <laughs> off, but like, the Sith wasn't destroyed by like a pretty, pretty huge majority. Yeah. Like, they, like, filled the TD Garden with, like, Sith people, like, just watching it go down. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, shit, yeah. Like, <laughs> but, like yeah. there, there are at least 20,000 Sith at, yeah. that, at that party that yeah. they were having for Red. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the party. <laughs> um, no, I agree with you. I, I think that it kind of cheapens Vader as a character um, because, like, and I really think they could have saved that if they had Anakin in this movie at all. They could have. Yeah. They could have saved it if they had Hayden Christensen come out as a force ghost and, and all do they something. Could, all they needed, all they needed him to do was saying, "I tried, worked for a bit, but you have to finish it." All that could have worked. They just said, yeah. "Yeah, he just had to have. He just needed to convince Ray or Ben or or Ben or somebody yeah. to do something." Yeah. I would have liked to see it with Ben more than Ray because Ben well, well, worships grandson, him. Yeah. yeah, yeah, me too. I would have loved to see that. Yeah, and we do get the. Um, the voices of everyone. Yeah, which is, but like then you would have like Anakin would still be able. You could still make the argument that he brought balance to the Force because he was the one that was the one that convinced people to. Yeah, but that I, just I, didn't happen. Yeah, and there could have been a better way to do it because like you, yeah. I think you could defend like him being part of that massive Jedi that's talking to Rey at the end, but like it just felt it didn't hit. Like it felt unearned. Yeah. Yeah. Empty, I guess. It just felt like a... Like a cheap way to do it. Yeah, it felt like, oh, so this is the reasoning behind it. And the reasoning made sense. It was like, the only problem was the fact that this is what the <coughs> reasoning was, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It just, I feel like it did cheapen Darth yeah. Vader a little bit. That's yeah. upsetting. Mm-hmm. Uh, I really didn't like his death, Palpatine. Yeah. We me. talked about it, but like, ugh. <laughs> Like if you're just gonna bring him in and then you're just gonna vaporize him, like, ugh. yeah, with with his own force lightning, yeah, yeah. I mean that happens in all three trilogies now. Actually, yeah, it does. But he gets zapped. It's, it's he gets crispy yeah, in one of them. He doesn't him. die in one of them. Yeah. yeah. Um. So what do we think about Ben returning after uh, Palpatine gets axed? Oh, oh. So Ray, Ray's like on the ground, like yeah. dead essentially. Yeah. Yeah, what is up with this? Why is she dead? Why are they dead? Why? Yeah, why? Yeah, is she it doesn't dead? make any sense it in the first place. Oh, I thought it made sense. How? She <coughs> she like, pushed back. Like it wasn't <laughs> like it was like she was taking on any electrical damage. He did no, take a lot of her life. Yeah, the force. one defense I'll give the reasoning behind Palpatine in this movie. If Palpatine was able to come back, and how strong he was against both of them, with the knowledge of everything we've seen him do in the past. The fact that he could hold both of these extremely powerful young Jedi down, drain their life and like strength in his own. Yeah. The fact that like Ray had to overcome that amount of energy could have killed her, and I was like, okay, yeah, that's how it happened. Yeah. She sacrificed sure. herself to like make that happen. I don't know because they both just woke up. 
You know what I mean? Like Ben Solo woke up and got yeeted off a cliff, and yeah, Ray like, woke up and was just like fighting. It just didn't seem like. I mean, Ben like is so powerful though. We saw him like. But Ray smokes <clears throat> him every time. Yeah, Ray's, Ray's more, more powerful. Yeah. yeah, I know. That's why she was the one who killed him. Because mm-hmm. that. So you're saying that took out all of her energy essentially. And yeah, because like they both got their energy drained. Kylo <laughs> does have a fighting chance, but like he got thrown into the cliff because he was drained. Ray who is stronger than Kylo, as we've seen throughout this entire trilogy, was able to overcome it, use the spirit of the Jedi, and then use her last breaths before she got revived to kill this guy. So it made sense for me, and it made sense why she died. Yeah, it makes... Okay, I see where you're coming from, but it still doesn't change the fact that, like, Kylo or Ben Solo literally resurrects somebody in this movie. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not defending that. But what yeah. what is up with that? I don't know. Like what? What is the? That's like the whole point of like the the prequel trilogy. Yeah. Yeah. Like, is he doing that as a Sith? Is he doing that as a Jedi? Like, Obi Wan could have literally brought anybody back. Yeah. So like, it seems the, like the way why I couldn't Anakin just bring yeah. back pa- like Padme or something. I don't know. The way I took it was, it was the life energy they were talking about before, <laughs> like with the snake and with the whole. Because she was like, I gave him my life energy. I gave him some of mine so he could have more. So it was like an exchange. I thought that's how I interpreted it. Okay. And that's how I thought they were telling me it because he did the thing with the hand on her to like breathe life back into her. So what little energy he had left after they both got drained is what he gave so she could live. Okay. But to atone, that's how I took it. Yeah. I see what you mean. I don't, I don't buy it though. Yeah. I wish it didn't happen. I wish it didn't happen. And they just kept trading it back and forth until they built up their energy again too. I guess. yeah. 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 Like, (laughs) <laughs> that's, that's the plan the whole time that's and why Ray they just didn't think to do it that's the second well thing. yeah well that's that's why they had Kylo just uh, disappear yeah I guess so um yeah I thought that whole I them making out man was just weird to me Mike uh I heard you kind of wanted that I did kind of <laughs> want that uh but like in a joking like, manner? No, like in a different way <laughs> yeah. than they did it in this movie. It just kind of felt like it was like it just had to be done. Like they they had to like relieve some sort of tension. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it didn't feel earned. Yeah. I saw more of the tension between them in the rewatch for this show. Yeah. Than I ever did. When people were saying Raylo when the first my first viewings for seven and eight, I was like, What are you talking about? But like I can see it now. But this, I was like, I think it would have been a better ending for them if he just said, like, like expressed some sort of love and then faded away. Instead, Like, I thought that would have been a stronger thing, even if it was just the hug and then he faded away. Yeah. And I always interpreted the energy between Kylo and Rey as, like, the same energy between, like, I, I guess not energy, but, like, vibe. Like, I thought it was the same vibe between, like, Leia and Luke. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, we're both, like, linked in this way, and there's a lot riding on this link. It, it didn't come across as, like, like tension. Yeah. Like, oh, those two should get together. Like, no. So you weren't happy with it then, Mike? I just think if they were to do it, which I l- would have liked to see them do it, it would have been cool if, like, one of the first times they forced time in this movie while well, Ben's still, like, Kylo Ren. Mm-hmm that they have some sort of, he, he kind of like makes th- more of like an outward impression to Ray that like he's interested in her in, her in like that <laughs> way. I mean, honestly though, yeah. like it kind of just felt like, like, oh, like Kylo Ren's <laughs> about to die. Like Ben Solo is about to die. Like might as well give him a kiss. Might as well just let him kiss. Yeah. You know? right? And then like after he kisses, like, I don't, I don't know. My friend said something really funny last night. He was like, Ben Solo like kisses a girl and like it was immediately redeemed like he <laughs> like <laughs> he, he kind of was though which is which is kind of funny but mm-hmm. yeah so is it just like angst from puberty <laughs> yeah like, I don't know, like over time he like never kissed a girl his entire life and then kisses one smiles and then so dies. we just <laughs> we just determined that Kylo Ren was an incel. People, like people have been saying yeah. that for a while. Yeah. Is he kind of though? Kind of yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't know if that's the, where we want to go with it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I know so far we've been talking a lot about the things that didn't work for us, but 
we all have all said that we had fun with it, and I think there are enjoyable things in the movie, and I am looking forward to seeing it again at some point soon. Yeah. Um, Probably within the next week. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not in a rush like this weekend, but like within the next seven days, I'll see it again. I'll probably see it this week. I'm weekend. going Saturday at 8 a.m. Fantastic. Yeah. Why so early? Uh, a friend of mine uh, moving back to Boston. He lives in Boston. Yeah. Huge Star Wars kid, mm-hmm. and I want to be with him the first time he sees it. Nice. That's, that's going to be fun. Yeah. Uh, favorite moments? Do we have favorite moments? I know we're all fans of the Ben Solo redemption scene and the fight. Favorite moments? I liked seeing um, Finn's relationship with Carrie Russell's character. I that, that was name. dope. Yeah, we didn't talk about that. I liked how there was that other like Wait. sect of stormtroopers who ran away. Oh, oh yeah. yeah I think cool. it was Carrie Russell. <clears throat> no, Carrie Russell played Zord Bliss. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. You're talking so then Poe and Zord Bliss. Yes. Then? Oh, okay. Like seeing their history together, seeing oh, okay, it back and right. forth. I, I really liked Finn. that. I was like, hmm. oh well, Poe and Finn too. I always like seeing them together. Yeah. I thought we were talking about the stormtroopers. I don't know actors' names, <laughs> so. Um, but yeah, Poe on that planet, seeing that he has not necessarily a dark past, but like a shady history. Mm-hmm. I liked that. Fleshed him out more, and I liked his entire arc. Spice Runner. Yeah. Yeah, that was a cool little thing. Yeah, nice nod. I'm assuming spice is a drug. Yeah. 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 A stand-in for a drug, pretty much. Yeah. Um, it's like the Dune series. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did anyone else get a lot of, m- like, Mad Max vibes from the... Uh, the oh, desert? Oh, the with the Pisana. color? Yeah. That's the name of the planet. Pisana. Oh, okay. Pisana. With, not even, like, with the colors and everything. Like, when they were, like, they went on, they w- were trying to fix that ship that carried uh, Rey as a baby, and then... <laughs> They had the Knights of Ren, and their like s- like their their armored getup. I was like, "This is Mad Max." <laughs> like they just yeah, like <laughs> the Knights of Ren are weird in this. Like I don't they didn't need to be in this movie. No. Also, not loyal. That's their boy right there. They tried to take him out at yeah. the end. Yeah, I think it's funny though. Like those scenes where Kylo Ren and the Knights of Ren are like like walking through the halls of the Star Destroyer. It's like me and the boys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like better roll up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I honestly, I really think the Knights of Ren could have just been buried after seven. I feel like this did nothing for them other than had them be in a movie. Also, Snoke says that Kylo Ren is last of the Knights of Ren, and then like all thirteen of them or whatever show up in the Rise of Skywalker. Are there are there Ren? Kylo I thought he said he was the leader. Are they like I, I, I was. I always assumed they were like Kylo Ren's. Like <laughs> Kylo Ren was like, "Yo, I trust you, John. We be a, a Knight of Ren." <laughs> I always took it as. He was. I thought he said that you were the leader of the Knights of Ren. Oh, was it leader? Then? I think that's oh. what the line was. Okay. Well, oh, okay. The Knights of Ren existed. I'm pretty sure before Kylo Ren joined them. Okay. Yeah, as so. it's being explored in that comic series that came out last week. Yeah. Epis- uh, issue one. I'm excited to read that. Yeah. I think I might go pick that up today. <laughs> yeah. It's, honestly, it sounds like a plan because, like, yeah. I, I this movie left me wanting more Ben Solo. Same. I love. So, it. I love it. So seeing Ben Solo transition <laughs> to the dark side. While it's not what I'd like to explore with the character right now, after seeing him be redeemed, um, it's kind of our only option <laughs> for light side Ben. Yeah. So. Yeah. You know, I. I just don't. I don't know. I think I think the only way I can really sum up that trilogy is like I'm pretty much done with it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like I don't know if I want to go deep into the EU of it. I don't know. I'm kind of interested to see what what like brought Ben Solo to that point like in more detail yeah and I think they are in like less of a grand way over the next year or two maybe three years are going to flesh out s- the gap of six to seven uh-huh and I'm interested to see that I think we're also going to get stuff about after nine. Oh, like books and stuff probably that'd be cool yeah I'd like to see a comic series or something about like Ray Ray so. after nine yeah. Poe after nine what happens to the squad afterwards? Yeah. Well, because they're not in the next trilogy, right? Or they're not the lead in the next trilogy. So, yeah, trilogy. Th- I wanted to bring that up a little <coughs> bit. The next movie, as far as I know what the lineup is, the next movie is the first in the Ryan Johnson trilogy, which is starting from Ground Zero, New Slate, New Time Placement Period, probably. New everything, really. New everything. Probably not even going to have a crawl. Maybe they're not called episodes. Probably won't have a crawl. It's probably going to have a new theme, new Star Wars theme, you know? Probably. It's going to be very, very new, and I'm excited for it. But I don't know when it's coming. 
I heard I thought it was 2021. Definitely not. I don't think that's the case anymore. If it still was, <laughs> it's 2020 now, basically. Yeah. Yeah, like in 10 days, 11 yeah. days. I yeah, I think. Wow, that's a trip. <laughs> that is my a brain. Trip, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I think the 2021 Disney movie for the big like holiday release is Avatar. So because I think that was supposed to be 2020 and then it got pushed to 21. I could see 2022. Yeah. So I think 2022 is when we're we can like hope for the next big Star Wars movie. I think at Celebration in 2020, we're going to get a lot more information about where this is all going now. Here's a bet. I think the biggest announcement out of that event is going to be the next animated series that's about Han Luke and Leia after six. Awesome. Yeah. See, like, there's still I'm sure cool Mark Hamill will come back. And yeah, Luke he would. Too. That's what I'm worried about with this new trilogy is that <coughs> they're not going to be able to explore the expanded universe of, like, because like, I know, like, Clone Wars has already, like, thoroughly been expanded on. Uh, I would like to see that Luke and Leia training type deal. Yeah, and I'm sure if they do a series like Clone Wars, we'll yeah. get it. It's just there's, for it. there's yeah. so much, like, time they can jump around in now that I thought <laughs> everything that was going to be coming up is going to be a part of, like, what is it, the new trilogy, Trilogy 3. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I, I, there's a lot more I still want to see from the old days. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're going to, they'll keep making comic books and stuff. Yeah. Like, so, um, also, uh, go ahead, Mike. No, go for it. Oh, what was Finn's ending? Uh, Do any of you remember or can <laughs> tell me what so it was? I, I have a theory Okay. here. I think he might be a little force sensitive. Me too. Finn. Yeah. And, I, and there, there has been like periods and points in the prior two movies that kind of point to that but yeah. like in this one he he talks a lot of how he has like that feeling yeah like that for like yeah and he, he says, says like, like the, the force the force brought, brought us me. together yeah which is very similar to the way leia talked at the end of uh jedi the original trilogy yeah yeah, yeah. so that's cool yeah and like he he is the only other one for non force sensitive person that we know of in this new trilogy to wield the lightsaber yeah so I think it makes sense for his character and, like, his yeah. relationship with Rey to be trained as a Jedi. Mm -hmm. But, like, are we going to get to see that ever? Maybe like, in a comic book. W was the last thing that Finn did in this movie just hug Rey and Poe? Probably, yeah. So we never got to, we never learned what he was going to say? I think what he was going to say is that he feels the Force. Oh, I thought he was going to say, Rey, I love you. But I thought it was going to be too. Yeah. I don't know. When you're going down in the sand and you're like, I, I never told you. <laughs> I feel it. <laughs> just like I feel. I think I can move too. things. <laughs> I can move rocks. Um, yeah. But yeah, I enjoyed the movie. Yeah, it's fine. But it wasn't what you wanted. No, because not even that. Because like I'm fine when movies aren't what I want. But this just felt like a mess. But it was a fun mess. <laughs> yeah, it's a. Uh, it's a movie. It is a movie. It's a movie. <laughs> <laughs> Let's rank this movie. All right. My phone fell on the ground. So I heard. All right. Who wants to go first? <coughs> I'll go first. Okay. Start from the bottom. Where's my list? <laughs> All right, I'll go first. Unless you found your the list. The final episode. No, I think it's gone. Of the season. I think my list is gone. Oh, oh no. man. Okay, you would do that. Go ahead. All right. Uh, so this, let me just preface this in saying that Probably tomorrow this is going to change. Yeah. Um, so this is like a little more than 12 hours after I saw it. Uh, 11, Attack of the Clones. 10, The Last Jedi. 9, Solo. 8, Phantom Menace. 7, Rogue One. 6, The Rise of Skywalker. 5, A New Hope. 4, Revenge of the Sith. 3, The Force Awakens. 2, Return of the Jedi. And, and 1, Empire Strikes Back. Okay. Uh, so you had Rise at 6? Yep. Okay. Uh, as of right now, where I'm standing is this. 11th is The Phantom Menace. 10th is Attack of the Clones. 9 is Rogue One. 8 is Solo. 7 is Rise of Skywalker. Okay. 6 is A New Hope. 5 is Revenge of the Sith. 4 is The Force Awakens. 3 is Return. 2 is The Lost Jedi. And 1 is Empire. Okay. Last night, I had 
Rise of Skywalker below Solo, but I swapped that. But I might swap it again. <laughs> oh, so you might you might rank Skywalker at eight. Oh, even lower. Yeah, I see. Okay, I managed to go into iCloud and salvage it. Thank Fantastic. God. Uh, number eleven, Phantom Menace. Number ten, Attack of the Clones. Number nine, Rogue One. Number eight, The Last Jedi. Number seven, Revenge of the Sith. Number six, Rise of Skywalker. Number five, A New Hope. Number four, Return of the Jedi. Number three, Solo. Number two, Force Awakens. Number one, Empire Strikes Back. We yes. ranked Rise of Skywalker in the same spot. And I was right. I had it lower than both of you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that is the end of the Skywalker saga. Oh, before we end, the ending. <laughs> the ending ending. What are you talking about? Going back to Tatooine. It's sunset. <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah. I feel like you called that, didn't you? She's sledding on the sand for whatever reason. Well, that was a callback to her introduction. I liked that. Yeah. But oh, did she do that? Uh, at the I, When she gets introduced <laughs> in Seven. But, like. My bad. Force goes Luke and Leia. Ray being like, my name's Skywalker. <laughs> yeah, that's a little silly. Yeah. That's not what I hoped Rides of Skywalker I like, implicated. I like the, the meaning behind it. Like, I like how with uh, Spider-Man, Spider-Verse, you're like, anyone can be Spider-Man. Yeah. I like that idea that, like, you don't have to be tied to your family. Because Star Wars is always about shedding, like, the sins of the father. So that aspect of her being like, my name, I am a Skywalker. Right. I liked that. Yeah. I thought it fit I thought it was fitting for the entire series. But it just felt like th- like when the the force theme was swelling again, y- you were right. This is what I wanted to see, but it just didn't feel right for me. Yeah, I, I didn't really What was that old lady doing in the middle of Tatooine? <laughs> like she was she was like, <laughs> "What's your name, girl?" <laughs> Nobody's been here in years. It's like, where did yeah. you come from? Where are, like, this no be, one lives here. Yeah. Where are you coming from? I thought the Lars homestead was literally the middle of the desert. Why yeah. is there just this wandering woman? <laughs> that was weird, man. But like burying the sabers, I, I yeah, I thought like the symbolism behind the ending it fit, but it just felt like. But at the same time, like Leia gave Ray the lightsaber. Yeah, but it's, that wasn't Ray's. Like, she finished the job with it. Oh, okay. You know? But, like, Ray, Ray's her own person. I like how Anakin's lightsaber w- was buried on Tatooine. Yeah, me too. I think that that's yeah. really cool. Yeah. It's fitting. The whole Leia thing, the lightsaber doesn't really make any sense. But I guess she doesn't really have any other home planet because it was blown up. Yeah. So. It's true. So, yeah. whatever. It was in a rock at her brother's house. Yeah. Yeah. I guess we'll, <laughs> just, I guess we'll just go with the whole family resting place. Yeah. So, that's the end of the saga. That is the end of the saga. <laughs> that was such an anticlimactic. Well, that, that's how. I that's what it is. All. Yeah. Well, that's what it is. A fun anticlimactic roller coaster. Seventeen weeks of podcasting <laughs> to get to this point. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> oh, man. Honestly, I re- last night I really wanted to watch the Last Jedi again. Last night. Yeah. I was sitting there, I was thinking about this movie, I was like, it's too late, but I really want to put on Last Jedi. Yeah. Couldn't do that tonight. <laughs> didn't you, I, I woke up to a text from you that said you didn't sleep last night. I got like four hours of sleep. I, uh, I, I would, this isn't going to become a podcast about sleep schedules now, okay. but yeah. So, uh, before we wrap up, any final words from you, Pat? You're out of here soon. Yeah, I'm out of the physical studio. Yeah. Uh, thank you guys for supporting everything listening to our voices on a weekly basis mm-hmm. it's been dope especially seeing that like over 1500 of you like care enough to come back and see that's definitely been like one of the more fulfilling things i've had uh, while i've been at college so yeah. thank you very exciting and yeah. the shows would uh, function significantly less <laughs> The, yeah. Than they do if you were not here. <laughs> Good luck replacing me, man. <laughs> like, Honestly, are. the next time I'm on camera, the board is going to be on the table, and I'm going to be like trying to like, like okay, Finesse so next it, topic. Yeah. <laughs> you are a valuable, valuable resource, Pat. Yeah, so thank you. Thank very you, much, guys. Pat. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys, too. Oh, it's yeah. been a lot of fun. Yeah, I've really enjoyed doing the saga. Uh, I've always loved Star Wars, but this was extra fun. So yeah, this is a lot. Yeah, of fun. yeah. Uh, thank you, Mike. Of course, once again. Oh, dude, it's been fun. It has been. It's been uh, really fun. 
this is not the end. No. This is the end of our Skywalker saga, maybe. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> uh, so maybe not. Yeah, maybe. In 30 years, are we going to re-resurrect Jedi Knights to do the next two movies? <laughs> um, so the plan right now, just to get a sense, is uh, this: once we finish Mandalorian, that's going to be the end end of season one. Yep. We're going to take a little break. Um, Still got to figure out how we're going to do those Mandalorian yeah. episodes. Yeah. We'll figure something out. Um, <coughs> and then some point in the early weeks of 2020... Perhaps February, mm-hmm. uh, we will be doing season two of Jedi Knights. Oh yeah, and we got to figure out the logistics, but it will be a watch along and reviewing of Star Wars: The Clone Wars. Yep, all what seven seasons? Yeah, because uh, season seven is February. Right. Wow. I've never seen the show. I've seen season one and half of season two and the movie. I've seen like bits and pieces of it. So it's uh, gonna be a fun time. Yeah, the only the only animated series I've watched all the way through is Rebels. So, yeah. So I'm I'm excited to see this aspect of Star Wars because I like the prequel era. Seeing good content with it is exciting. Oh, so yeah. I'm yeah. looking forward to it. But until then, uh, if you're watching this video, you're on YouTube.com/slash JoyClicks, where there is going to be some content uploading over the holiday season. Some of it's Star Wars related. So it's really funny. I'm not toot my own horn, but I'm I'm a fan. Um, I think that was probably the funniest thing we've had on camera when we taped that. Yeah, that so was the, hilarious. There's an exciting video coming up in the next couple of weeks, so I look forward to that. Uh, if you're listening to us, you're on podcast services like Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Uh, would appreciate ratings. Those help. We have five five star ratings in Apple Podcasts. Wow. Moment. Yeah. So we're what, like number one on the charts? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure I gave one of those. <laughs> uh, if you would like to support these shows, uh, support us working together and continue to increase the production value of these shows, you can go to patreon.com slash joyclicks where you can see little perks, little bonuses, information about the shows, behind the scenes stuff, uh, exclusive content, like a full version of a commentary track. You get stuff early too. We you do. Yeah. Not perk. this episode because I'm uploading it the second we're done recording. Yeah. <laughs> but um yeah, that's the spiel. So would you guys like to plug yourselves online and sure. call it a day? Yeah, you can follow me on Twitter at Mike P. Connors. You can follow me on Twitter at the P Moron. And you can follow me on Twitter at Chris N. Buckley. That's everything, isn't it? That is everything. That's, that's all yeah. new movies and more. All right. Well, look forward to <laughs> the rest of Mandalorian. Yeah. Enjoy your holiday break, and then we'll be back in 2020 for Clone Wars. Yep. So, until then, we're fine. Everything's fine. How are you? May the Force be with you. Love you guys. General Kenobi!